Hello, hello. You got a lagging chat. Doing all right, my friends. Doing all right. Uh, not ashamed to say that I just woke up. <laughs> not ashamed to say that. Arduin, hello. The Cork, Katie Marie. Oh, you like Kamen Rider Blade? I liked it too. Uh, I've only seen a couple of episodes of it, but yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Ugh. Ugh. So, well, I suppose that all of you have heard. Oh, Miss Nayang is a uh, suit dub double in blade. I didn't know that. Oh, DJ Shire, stop. <laughs> you make me blush. Ah, so yeah, I've decided to sell my pink tennis shoes, and I'll make sure that Katie Marie knows the, the email. I mean, oh, did I say that out loud? Oh. <laughs> but, uh, oh, I'm having a milk coffee. It's a one piece milk coffee. It's actually really good. Um, this is the only way I, I really like coffee is, a uh, triple sugar, triple cream. So. And this is a good version. Um, Uh, yeah. No one will buy those horrible, horrible shoes. No, they won't. <laughs> they better. Somebody better. Uh, I don't know. I'll probably start them at a... Probably start them at, like, five bucks. You know, something... And uh, they'll, you know, they'll be like five dollars shipping. They'll be super, super simple to to sign them. Yeah, you know, maybe I should even wait. Nah, nah, I'll just, I'll just sell them. I'm going to sacrifice cat girls to my fuel converter for a reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the rest of my, you know, I could probably get rid of the Jareth costume for a pretty decent amount. Ah, oh, Mantis is here. How's it going, hun? Mantis has a new boyfriend. <laughs> oh, did they? I didn't know if Paw's stuff sold well. Well, he had nicer stuff than I got. <laughs> did you see? You, you saw my reply. Didn't you about the uh, the the blue pages and the the matrix? Well, of course he did. Uh, you you commented on the music, but uh, I actually was going to bring all the uh, the blue pages when I was playing the game. I didn't trust. Uh, I didn't trust the other brother. God, I like that game. Why would I sell the Jareth outfit? Because I probably would never play Jareth again. That's the only reason why if I ever if I ever did it. But um You know, I don't know, baby. Mark had a really good idea. 
And if I had the room and the time to do it, I would totally do it. It would be a kid's show. And, uh, you know, edutainment type of thing. And uh, it would be like a Mr. Rogers neighborhood, only it wouldn't be Mr. Rogers. It would be a Juario's neighborhood. And I would convert the basement to a, um, to a set, basically. And so, like, one of the rooms or that corner over there would be uh, the, the land of make-believe. And uh, only instead of calling it the land of make-believe, you you know, would call you the, uh, the land of imagination. And it wouldn't be Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, obviously. It'd be Juario's Alley or something, you know. That'd be creepy, no. <laughs> it's Juario's, uh, not neighborhood, but, uh, you know, whatever. Um, so, you know, I'd come downstairs, I'd sing a song, invite people to go with me to a factory where they made something. Basement suite. No, that still sounds bad. <laughs> It still sounds bad. Um, and then, you know, instead of the uh, trolley, it'd be a Shinkansen. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Uh, Shinkansen. <laughs> Would you like an apple? <laughs> so it'd be, it'd be going off, and then uh, when we go to the, the land of imagination... It'd be the land of imagination, and uh, Psychotaku would be there as a little puppet. You know? Hi, everybody! <laughs> Konnichiwa, minasan! <laughs> it's a Psychotaku! <laughs> well, hi, Mr. Psychotaku! Konnichiwa, Justin san! <laughs> Konnichiwa, minasan. You know, and it should be, yeah. and now we can imagine, you know, Yankee J down there. Ah! Where the hell am I? Konnichiwa. Ah! Be hilarious. It'd be so funny. And uh, you know. <laughs> be funny but that was his idea and it's a great idea I just don't have the room to do it <laughs> but Mr. Rogers isn't there they can't bring Mr. Rogers back Necronomicon. But it would be a fun thing. It would be a fun little thing. And I'd totally do it. You know, make a little land and make believe. Make a little psycho nickel. Yeah! You know, and she'd be the little hand puppet that does like the, you know, with the, with the hands. She'd be rubbing her hands. Yeah, yeah! And that's all she'd say. Yeah, 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 yeah! You know, Konnichiwa, Psycho Nickel. Nya, 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 nya. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> How are you today? Nya, 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 nya. No, I'm not high. This is how I normally am. <laughs> Thank God Nash isn't on here. He'd just be <laughs> he'd just be staring at his computer. What is wrong with that boy? Ha ha ha.
no, this is how I normally am. <laughs> making the news, making the new video when I was when I had the uh, the common writer joke about uh, come you know him him writing the uh, well that would never fly in the common writer world you know and he's riding the unicycle and it's, you know across the me the fuck <laughs> I was laughing so hard. I was crying. I was, as soon as I put it, you know, I was, I took the still shot and I was carefully editing around it. Oh, photoshopping it. And then I, and then I put it up. And before I even put it on, I started giggling. I was just like giggling really, really hard. And then I put it on there and I sized it. And I just started laughing. This is me. This is me. I laugh at my own jokes. Oh man. No, I I, I do that. I do that. Why is everybody going to Springboard? I have a three month uh plan with uh, Springboard Uka Tadasuke. Uh because um to see if they'll work better. Uh, CPMs are very low. They always have been. Um, some of my best shows, I get $25 from off a of blip. I can't live like that. Uh, and they can't, a blip can't offer anything better at the moment. So I have done a flat CPM deal with uh with uh springboard and i know i'm gonna make more money how does springboard make money the same way that uh blip makes money um they get an advertiser and they'll say you know uh let's say um let's say a coffee company you know let's say they they do uh a sapporo coffee and uh, Sapporo comes to them and says, "Hey, uh, we uh, here. You're an advertising company. We have an ad. We'd like you to play on some videos." And Springbird goes, "Okay, um, we have a deal. You know, uh, uh, thirteen cents every time it plays." And they go, "Okay." So now they've got a thirteen cent ad, and so they come to you and they say, "Hey." We've got a 13 cent and we'll give you six cents. We give you 6.5 cents every time it runs on your ad. And so you get money every time an ad runs on your video. You both get money. That's how you make money. That's how Blip makes money. It does. Uh, and, uh, Blip pays for that tax, but they don't hold taxes because I'm not an employee of Springboard nor Blip, so I do have to pay taxes every year. In fact, uh, the past two years we've had to pay taxes. We haven't. Uh, you guys have gotten returns. I haven't. We've had to pay, so it's uh, that is a problem that every video person has to do it it sucks but it's just a fact you know we all have to pay taxes uh, uh, Lewis has to pay taxes um, Lindsay uh, everybody does so you got to save some money from what you make kind of sucks but uh, but anyways that's how they make money um, but how does springboard do it better than blip Wecker um, I don't know All I know is that CPMs on blip can reach as high as eight, nine cents per CPM. So every time somebody hit, uh, hits your video, you can get it up to eight cents. But they fluctuate. One day it could be eight, one day it could be two. And it seems that I'm always hitting the days that we get two. Now, what Springboard is doing, they're offering a flat. CPM and uh, so I get a certain amount every time no matter what um, 
I don't know how they're doing it better than... Uh, Springboard's actually been around less of a time than Blip, but their parent company has been doing advertising for a long time. So it might just be that they have connections. Um, I don't know. What happens if you just don't declare this on taxes? No, you got to declare it on taxes. Because um, you get a W-2. Uh, you still get a W-2 or, or a, an M you still get an amount that you have to, that uh, you say that you get from your videos. Um, they still send you a little sheet that says, "Yes, you made this much. We paid you this much. We we sent you this much money." So you still got to do it. Hey, Nash. Just talking about how uh, we make money off of Blip and how we. Uh, how we make money off of, uh, you know, now that I'm going to Springboard. Uh, somebody asked why everybody, why I'm, everybody's going to Springboard, and I told them why I'm going to Springboard, because uh, I'm, I make m more money. So. Yeah, I was saying, I was actually even saying how I'm glad that Nash isn't here, or else he'd just be looking at his screen, and then I did an impression. It was, it was actually pretty good. It was like, because I was, I was being batshit crazy. <laughs> I said, that boy is just messed up. <laughs> that was my impression. <laughs> I got to have the long hair, but it doesn't... <laughs> I, I, that was the smallest thing that I had that, that, you know, works as his, uh, little, you know, smoking thingy. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we were talking about J-Dub's neighborhood. Spawned you. Nash, they have been, uh, pretty slow, but, um, I can tell them that, uh, I'll get in contact with Matt, uh, the guy who uh, talked to me, because I sent in a thing, and they didn't contact me, and then I told them, I sent an email directly to Matt, and within a week they got in touch with me. Um, I'll send you Matt's direct email. Uh, Joe sent me it, and then I sent it to, and then I sent Matt an email, so I'll send you that, and, and you should get on a little bit faster. Uh, they, they're, they're eager to get other Tigwa Tiggers on there, so not a problem. Thank you, Sirius Cobra. I'm glad you like the, uh, I like you, I'm glad that you, uh, like the new one. I couldn't figure out an opening, uh, so that's why I kind of jumps into the video. <laughs> But, um, I just couldn't figure out an opening, but that's okay. Oh, good for you, Screaming Mantis. That's tough to do, but I hear that some of the best ways to, to quit is just to go cold turkey, just to, just to stop. But, um. <laughs> that eventually all of Tigwa took women in Springboard, except for Lindsay. Lindsay swears by uh, Blip, and they love her. Um, and I don't know if uh, if Doug will ever change over. Um, if they offered me a good deal, you know, I might come back. But um, you know, right now I'm. Uh, Talking whenever I've, you know, there's the uh, there's different departments, and yesterday I had a problem with uploading stuff and quality control, and quality control got back to me within 10-15 minutes. I mean they were fast, so 
And you know what? I'm going to be doing all this stuff. Uh, Leonhardt, I'll answer you in just a moment. Yeah, see, you don't go to a kiosk for uh, an e-cig there, hon. You gotta, you gotta go to a regular. You gotta order it online. I've been really happy with my e-pipe, but it is dead now. So I've got to order a new bowl. Bowls are like 40 bucks. Be especially for this brand, because uh, this brand of e-pipe is uh, all the electronics is in here. And you can't just like tap and pull out the electronics. It's in the pipe. So I've got to basically buy a new bowl. And uh, it really sucks. But, um, you know, I'd still rather smoke that than... Uh, than, than a real pipe. And Garth Bard, you know, I used to, I used to do a, a, a cigar uh, once on my birthday. But I really do enjoy a, uh, my pipe. And I use zero nicotine. Yeah, see, Jessica Raven, exactly the same thing. I, I, I use zero nicotine. Um, even the e-liquid that I've got, I've got right now, before my bowl died, I have, uh, yeah, um, from Austin Vapor, which is actually pretty good, um, chocolate. You can see zero milligrams of uh, nicotine. I just, uh, now, Austin Vapor, I'm, I'm pretty good with them. And uh, uh, what is it? Um, there's another company that I've gotten stuff from that's pretty good. Yeah, I just... You know, well, because I was never addicted to nicotine, anyways. So I just, you know, oh well. All right, let me get the. Okay, Nash, I am sending you. A Skype here. Okay. Da 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 da. I'm actually sending you a couple of contacts here, Nash. Um, there you go. And uh, not a problem. And just tell them, like, uh, yeah, with what I just typed. So we're good. Sage's stuff is really good, and I always suggest uh, people r watch it. Actually, Nash, would you like to... Uh Would you like to get on and uh, talk? We can talk e-cigs if you want, or anything. We can do. We can, you know. Okay, let me call you in here. I don't have video like you do. I'm not one of those. Still haven't been able to figure out how to do the video and video on this. Hello. Hello. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Oui. Okay, I, I gotta say this because, all right. Everyone's asking what the hell is this thing with the e -sync. They, it's It can be a replacement and then a way to stop smoking entirely if you want. Mm -hmm. Like you. Um, well, I still use the nicotine. 
Yeah. But I don't smoke the cigarettes. Okay. Let me try and break down. Here's the advantages of it. The e-cigarettes don't produce smoke. They produce water vapor. What's in them is... Uh, Glucose. Water, nicotine, candy flavoring, and something called propylene glycol. And before you freak out about Glycerin. that... What? But glycerin, yeah, not 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 well, yeah, I, yeah. what I was saying. Yeah. yeah, what that what that stuff is is propylene glycol is a common ingredient they use in things like asthma inhalers. So it's it's not harmful. It's something that's used in a ton of products you use every day. Mm. Um, there's no carcinogens. There's no tar. There's no arsenic. There's no radium. There's none of the stuff that's in your. Yes, there is radium. In your cigarettes, if you didn't know, radioactive material. How nice is that? If you didn't know that, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not kidding. Google that shit. There's radioactive isotopes in your cigarette. Why? I don't know. Um, but okay, that's you can get the liquid in. Like I get it. I have it in 36 milligrams. That's the hard heavy. That's if you smoke like two packs a day. Good gravy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or you can get it all the way down to zero yeah. if you want. Yeah, like I said, it I've, have to, I've got this. It doesn't have to taste like a regular cigarette if you don't want. I smoke coffee flavor. You have chocolate flavor, so you know. Um, now, if you want to get one, if you are interested in actually getting one, and you see them in the Walmart, you see them in, in the gas station, and you see them in a mall kiosk, don't buy those what those are is those are the cheap bottom of the line model that they buy in bulk in china and they sell here at a significant markup um they're not good units they're crappy units um here's my recommendation and it's something newish that just came out but it works really well sean's tried them and he likes them i i like uh, they're not my favorite use, but they're the simplest ones to use. Mm -hmm. um, get uh, a go to. Th this is my personal recommendation. You can find them at other places, but I like these vendors. And it's going to sound a little complicated, but it'll save you money in the long run. The first thing you want to do is go to madvapes.com and pick up an ego kit the the uh the ego is it's it's a very large battery uh it comes with two batteries and a charger and that's it, it's for about forty dollars for the basic kit at mad vapes that's that's to start i know i'm i'm getting complicated here but i'm trying to save you money the next place you want to go is a place called altsmoke.com and um, they sell a little unit called the, the Ego Vision. And that's the atomizer. That's actually a cartomizer they make. And why I recommend this one is it is the easiest damn thing to fill. It's You unscrew a little cap. It's like a little <laughs> bottle with the atomizer in the middle of it. You unscrew a little cap. You drip in the liquid. You close it up. There's no syringes. There's no nothing. It just works, and it works well, and you can clean it out. You can rinse it out with, like, tap water and dry it out for a day and then use it again. And the atomizers go for about 5 bucks each. You'll go through about 2 to 3 a month with the rinsing them out and everything, and eventually they burn out and die. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's $15 a month. Your basic kit is $40, but you'll probably only have to replace that once a year because those batteries last about six months mm -hmm. and the ego batteries they do die but you have to replace them you'll still, have, you'll still have the charger and then liquid i go through about a bottle i, I was a heavy smoker i go through about a bottle of liquid a week that's about five or six dollars depending on where you get it you get your awesome vapor they're a good place they, they do well them and the um, tasty vapor sent me some really nice vapor. irish yes. cream that we tried, actually, and I still haven't put yes. that video up. <laughs> you still haven't put that video up. Yes, Tasty Vapor is another good thing. They'll custom make your liquid at Tasty Vapor mm. if you want. And 
that's all you need to know. You get the Ego Kit from Mad Vapes, because they have it relatively cheap at about $40. But once you have that kit, you're set to go. You get the Ego Vision Cartomizers from Alt Smoke. Get, I'd say to start off with, get about three of those. That would be about $15. And then however much liquid you want to go, I'd say get about four bottles of liquid. That'll last you. Find out how much, how long that will last you, but get get about uh, four bottles to start, and there you go. That's that's all you need, and I think that covers it. <laughs> Don't buy them from the store. Yeah. Don't buy them from the mall. Yeah, and like Piku said, if you ever want to quit, you can do it. So. Yes. But uh, yeah. So how you been, Nash? How I've, oh, I've been busy. I've been busy, busy, busy. Really? What you been busy yes. doing? Um, well... If I can I ask. Oh, uh, my last... Uh, I don't know if you heard about my last weekend. I had... I had probably one of the worst Sundays ever. Um, on the serious side of things, uh, my dad's in the hospital right oh, now sorry, again. Man. Another reason not to smoke, he's got serious <laughs> emphysema and COPD, and he's come down with another hit of uh, pneumonia, which happens quite often if you smoke for like about, he smoked since he's like a teenager. He's almost 70 now, so he smoked for a long, long time. Yeah. And uh, uh, he avoided the cancer, but still got the emphysema and COPD. Um, he's still in the hospital at the moment. They, they're they concerned about his uh He's, he's coming up anemic, so they're doing some tests on him right now. Um, they're concerned about his digestive tract. We're doing that today. I don't know what's going on there, but we'll find out soon. And that, yeah, that came down Sunday while I was in the middle of working. So that was a little bit of a hectic. And before, just before he came down ill, my monitor caught on fire. Cut. Caught on fire. Fire, yes. Fire, smoke, flame, yes. And you're asking how. Um, okay, I have one monitor, my new monitor, that my lovely, wonderful, amazing girlfriend got for me uh, for Christmas. And it's great, and I love it. And I have another monitor that is about 10 years old. And the reason I keep it is it's a 21-inch LCD <clears throat> monitor. But it was like one of the first ones they ever made. Mm -hmm. So instead of having that, there's a, you know that generic black uh, plug that goes to the back, the power cable, the computer power type power cable. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what all the monitors use now. Mine, they repurposed the power brick from a laptop. So for a while, the, Ins the Dell Inspiron 5100 and the Dell uh, 2100 FP monitor mm -hmm. used the same power brick. And the power brick caught on fire. That's not it good. Just, no, it's not. Especially when I'm just sitting there and I, I, I talked about this Monday, but okay. I'm... <laughs> I was sitting there and I hear, Neh. and you ever hear a noise in your house and you don't know where the hell it comes from? Oh yeah. And you're like, what the hell was that? and then it stops for a while. So you're like, well, I'll just let that go. And then all of a sudden, Neh. mother, what the, what, where is that coming? And you're, you're driving yourself nuts trying to find out where that noise is coming from. And then it stops and you're like, man. Neh. And then eh, again, and I'm like, okay, this is ridiculous. And I, cr and that's when my monitors turned off, and there was a pop, and there was a ball of fire near my feet, and smoke rising up from behind my desk. And fortunately, I keep a chemical extinguisher. But uh, yeah, there was a fire. Oh my god. <laughs> This is while I was trying to edit my video. It was just <laughs> flame. And even that did not deter me. It was we had to get the ambulance. The ambulance was the point where I said, okay, I'm, I'm done for the day. I'm, I'm done. Oh my. It was, that, 
before that, Adobe had been crashing on me all morning because one of the codecs had gotten corrupted. Mm. So I just, I, I had, it was, it was a very bad Sunday. Well, at least it didn't happen during the show. That would have been... Yeah. Well, actually, maybe it would have been kind of funny. That would have been actually a little... <laughs> well, at least the fire part would have been entertaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fire part would have been entertaining, but not the, not the ambulance not the yeah. part. But, uh, oh my God, I'm glad you're okay, though. Yeah, I'm a little sad because I was going to go see Ace Otaku this week, and I can't because... You know, dad's in the hospital, so I'm, I'm here, but. Hmm. Uh. Oh, Anthony and Emily now own their own flat. Excellent. Congratulations. Their own flat in Great Britain. So when is that going to happen there, Nash? When, when is uh, she going to come and, and, and... When's she coming and, down? Yeah. Um, oh, let's see. I'm... Oh, and, and Delta... Screw Delta while we're on this topic as to when. <laughs> Not a big Delta so fan. When, well, when I got back... <laughs> From the hospital that night, uh, when I got back home, I was obviously like, "Okay, well, I'm not flying out on Tuesday, mm -hmm. so I've got I've got to do something about about this flight." So I called Delta and I explained to them what was going on, and I need to I needed to reschedule a flight, obviously. And they're like, "Okay," and they asked me for like information about what hospital my father was in and what's his name and all that <laughs> stuff. And I'm like, "Well, okay, all right, I'll got to make sure it's legitimate." And I gave them all that, and then they tell me, "Okay, um, well, we've got you, we've got you rescheduled for uh, later in May, and we've got this, and um, that'll be uh, three hundred fifty dollars." And I'm like, um, "What? No, the the ticket was only two hundred and twenty dollars when when I bought it. Why is it now three hundred? Didn't that take into account the money I?" Oh yes, that did. We we already took that out. In total, the ticket would be about five hundred and seventy. But we've already taken your two hundred twenty out. What? No, they yeah. added three hundred on top. And and they also claimed, and because and they they said they were being generous, they waived the hundred and fifty dollar fee to to transfer fee because my dad was in the hospital. They waived that fee. They just. What? Tried to charge me five hundred and seventy dollars for for the ticket, and you told him to piss off. I told him to piss off, and, and here's the funny thing: um, I canceled the ticket outright, and I got a. All I managed to get out of them was an eighty dollar credit. So I canceled that, and then I rescheduled it. Now I have a one way flight going up, um, May twenty second, I think. And it's still, it's still to get that flight was an extra fifteen dollars because the flight itself was like about a hundred, so I had to, I had to pay in extra. I hate to say it, but I agree with uh, Psycho Neko Southwest. If you can ever afford it, if you if they there's, ever go to where you need to, Southwest. There's no Southwest in Charleston. I know. <laughs> I mean, it's Southwest, but yeah, but uh, you know, Southwest. I, or um, I've had okay dealings with um. Uh, with uh, Frontier, but no Frontier in Charleston. No Frontier in Charleston either. We have Delta and I think U.S. Airways, and I think that's about it. No JetBlue. No JetBlue. No JetBlue either. Wow. Nope. Hey, cold guy. How's it going? But it's okay. I'm gonna fly up, and then she's I. She's starting to make arrangements for the whole getting a truck, and then one of us. I she she's not putting the car on a trailer, not going down through the mountains. No, 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 no. I, I'll one of us is going to drive the car, one of us is going to drive the truck. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, well, bringing all this stuff down, and stuff. But uh, when when is that going to be? When is that going to be? Anyways, May, late May, end of the month. Yeah, by by the end of the month. Wow, we'll be driving back. 
Congratulations. Yeah, she and I got to, to talk a lot while uh, while we were there, and uh, she's she's awesome. You are such yes, a lucky yes, guy. She is. Yes, I am. <laughs> she was so much fun to hang out with too. I, I cannot wait to see you guys again soon. Well, I wish I'd been there, man. But man, <laughs> they still haven't got they still haven't gotten back to me about the thing. You know the thing because you've known you saw the thing and you know which thing. But they haven't gotten back to me about the thing, and I need to know about the thing because I have to get the thing together for the thing. Talk to talk to Doug. He he's he's yeah. He's all he's usually all over his uh, his tweets and stuff. Yeah, I need I need to because I need to plan some shit. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait for the Avengers movie, says Shinigami. Yeah, I I'm excited about it too. I'm I'm actually probably not as excited about it as a lot of other people, but um, I'm still looking forward to it. I know it's I'm not. There's going to be too many stars, and my my fear is that they're going to try and give them all equal time, and you can't give them they all won't. equal time. They won't. You can't. This is this is this. I, I'm going to tell you exactly how the movie's going to go. I haven't Ooh. seen it. This isn't spoilers. This is just I know this stuff. Mm -hmm. This is going to be. Um. Robert Downey Jr. with the Avengers. Really? You think so? The movie is going to fo focus mainly on Tony, a little bit on Cap, a lot of, a little bit, Cap and Thor are going to get a little backseat there too because Loki's a main villain, so it's, Thor's got to be kind of in it. And Hulk is not going to get the Hulk is going to get a little screen time, but not the most. And and um, uh, uh, Black Widow and Hawkeye are going to be kind of sidelined a little bit. So you think it's going to go in, in order of appearance? Kind of Tony Stark, Thor, Captain America. What? I think it's I think it's going to go in order of clout. Hmm. That and I'm still pissed off about the magnet bracelet thing. Magnet. You didn't hear about this? No. You know those ma those magnet bracelets they give you that they they claim will cure all things. Oh yeah 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 the the one that goes around your wrist yeah. Yeah um. That's they they uh a company in China got a sponsorship i don't know they, they got a, a thing in the, in the uh, movie you know product placement mm -hmm. except it's actually a plot point that tony bases the design of his new armor on the idea he got from because pepper gives him a set of these magnetic bracelets and there's a tie-in product for these, and it's not like those little twenty, thirty dollar bracelets you get from Walmart, Walgreens, or Walmart, and whatnot. No, they're two hundred dollar magnet bracelets. Product with, placement with the Marvel, yeah, product placement and with the Marvel, and they sell the they're selling them in a special edition box with the, the Avengers on it, and I'm ticked off about it mainly because. You're Disney. Do you really need to be giving this company that kind of credibility? See you, Mahi. Uh, I, I just, I just don't believe in that sort of thing. A well, magnet it, around. There's your... no science. Every single science says if there's anything to it, it is a placebo effect. There is no science. You can't. You. Part of it's like you you can't polarize your blood. We're not magnetic. I promise you. Oh gosh, Lee and Hart just linked to it. Oh, for crying out loud! They look cool, but 
two hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. WTF? I W W Y. <laughs> Marvel approved, and it it, it, it oh it's just, it's disappointing, and it makes me a little sad. Because I, I, it's not like they need, you're Disney, you don't need the money. You're Disney. It, I can understand, I, you know what, they're Back to the Future with the whole Pepsi thing and Back to the Future Part 2. Mm. Remember that? I didn't mind that. Okay, that was kind of funny. You know, that's fine. It's, it's Pepsi. You know what you get when you're getting Pepsi. You're getting sugar water, you're getting caffeine. You're fine. You, you know what it is. This is, uh, this just, this is scummy, and I don't like it. <laughs> Emily Joy, <laughs> Emily, ah, Magneto, happy fast bender thoughts. <laughs> I, you know, and that was one of the, the the very first time. Just, just, just speaking about this, one of the 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 very first time that I ever read a comic and cheered. And actually opened up the book and cheered was the very first time that Magneto ripped the adamantium out of uh, Wolverine. Uh, out of Wolverine? Yeah, did oh you? God, I remember. I uh, remember that, that one. I have that one. I was like, okay, yeah, he's done. He's, there's no way. And just Magneto, and how they wrote it was like, starts with a gentle pull, and then a tug, and then a wrenching tear, you know, and just... What? And you just see this metal pouring from his pores. <laughs> and I was just like, yes! Yes! And then we had, then we had 100 issues of the Bone Claws. Uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> oh, yeah, because that was totally his mutant power in the first place. He had Bone Claws. Yeah. Uh, you, 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 you were aware of what Claremont's original intention for for Wolverine was, weren't you? No. Oh God, this they 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 squashed this down hard. They squ- this but this was the original intention for Wolverine. I shit you not. Look it up. I'm not making this up. The original idea for Wolverine was not that he was a mutant human. He was a mutant Wolverine. That he was... Yes, he was a wolverine who mutated into a human. (laughs) And editorial said, um, we're not, we're we're not doing... We're not gonna do that. (laughs) We're not not gonna do that. (laughs) Um, no. (laughs) That's hilarious. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, we're, we're not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, so Hugh Jackman is human. All, and although Hugh Jackman does a great job, there are other people who I would have liked to have seen be yeah. Wolverine. Uh, but, you know, it, he, he did he did a fairly decent job. And, and seeing a, a nod in the X-Men first class. Oh, spoilers! But if you haven't seen it yet, suck on you, you know? Um, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was good. In fact, I really haven't liked. seen it le- yet. Rose blood is the sled. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. No, it, it, people were like, you're squeeing at Magneto. Yes. Magneto is my favorite hero. <laughs> <laughs> and I do say hero. <laughs> it's just, yeah, since name kills Dumbledore. <laughs> Screw you all if you haven't read it. But yeah, it was uh, it was it was good stuff. I don't know. It's it's. I've never been a big Ma- Magneto has not been having a good time of it lately. Let me tell you. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, he's he's kind of. Uh, I haven't read anything. But when they split like, off into two teams, I was like, no, I'm done. You guys do your thing. Oh, you missed M Day. You missed uh, the depowering. You missed Scarlet Witch. You missed all kinds of shit. Oh yeah, I, I, it's it. Well, actually, I was reading 
and and then I was like, oh, I'll, I'll pick up this thing. And then when I saw Scarlet Witch, no more mutants. I was like, okay, bye. <laughs> Put it down. Walk away. It's my, gotten silly. My Magneto is in my head. That's that's. <laughs> well, speaking of Fassbender, did you see the uh, that viral trailer thingy? Which magic they did for Prometheus? No. Um, it's it's a little short. Cl- it's it's like a commercial. Um, for the androids in the Alien universe, and Michael Fassbender is playing an an android in Prometheus, like Ash and like Bishop. He's mm. he's one of those. Okay. And it was a it was a commercial for the David model android that Fassbender is playing. And it was kind of it was interesting. I'm still hope, hope is is very excited about Prometheus. I am very much on the fence about Prometheus right now because hmm. have you ever seen that comic strip uh, Garfield minus Garfield? Yes, it's brilliant. It's it, I, I think it's Prometheus, brilliant. <laughs> from, when I heard about the premise for Prometheus, I sat there and I went, "Alien without the alien." Um, no. <laughs> Cause, cause when you were when you were twelve, and aliens had just come out, mm-hmm. you know, and, and you were sitting around and you, you're saying, "Man, you know what I want to see? I want to see a movie about the space jockey, cause that's where it's at. <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. Those aliens that pop out of people's chests, and yeah, yeah, that they're cool and all, but the space jockey's the man. That's what I want to see a movie about." Wow, <laughs> I, I, you know, it's I wouldn't be. The problem is the franchise has had like two really amazing movies, mm-hmm. and then two decades of just getting crapped on. Yeah, and all I want, all I want when it comes to aliens, give me one movie, we can put it to bed. Just we'll put the fran. Give me one good good movie give me a movie quality of aliens of alien put the franchise to bed that's you, all i want you, it's you, all I want. you can't you can't when, once they start doing sequels you, you can't go back it, it's like trying to go back and do jason uh you know they 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 tried to do it they even tried to relaunch the series and they sucked they sucked at it and, uh, and you just can't you just can't do it um we can always have the memories of Alien and Aliens, the two best movies uh, out of that entire series, but uh, you, you can't go back. It's like trying to redo love- Star Wars. Like, give me just one more Star Wars, and I'll be... No, no, it, it's not going to happen. In, in 89, Dark Horse put out um, a really amazing Alien sequel um, comic book that followed right after Aliens. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it went a little goofy near the end, but it, the, the, that was some re- great artwork, just stark black and white artwork, really good stuff. And then Alien 3 happened and blew its continuity all out of the water, and I was... Uh... Alien 3, man. Alien, freaking Alien 3. <laughs> Nash and Justin, I wouldn't yeah, mind I, Alien vs. Predator I, if it wasn't all about humans being, oh my god, I'm going to die. Yeah, I, I agree, Leonhart. You know, Alien vs. Predator, when it first came out in the comics, my friends were all like, oh yes. my god, this is how you do it. This is how yes. you do it. If they could have done the movie exactly like that, and just no talk, that was it. No talk throughout the entire comic book thing. I, there were sounds, but... There was no talking. If they had done just like that and just had it aliens versus predators, oh my god, it would have been awesome. Yeah. Well, no, the the, the comic it did have a human settlement it on an alien planet. Did, but most but of the humans, action. Yeah, they they were not the main characters. Yeah. No. Now, it, it's I'm Prometheus. It's Ridley Scott. It's more than likely going to be a good movie. I'm just, I'm, I'm cranky because man, screw the space jockey. 
Who gives crap about space jockey? <laughs> Who gives crap? Chinese food is always a good decision, Anthony. I had, I gotta tell you, Nash, uh, I was going to get some, I was looking for some UFO um, yakisoba bowls uh, to, to do with my uh, review this week because it was on a video game. UFO, yakisoba, um, and I went to a Korean rest uh, to a Korean market, and they I didn't know, but they had a uh, a little restaurant in there, and there was just this old lady uh, sitting there eating some noodles and uh, and eating some of the extra side dishes that they had, and I thought, well, I know I'll, I'll let me. It's like a bar, and there's like a lady behind it. The food was like. Six ninety nine, seven ninety nine. So I looked, and I was like, "Okay, I'll, I'll order this." And the lady came up. She, I don't think she spoke a lick of English, and she just smiled at me. Uh, that, <laughs> like, yeah, this. If I could get these, <laughs> yeah, this. This, if I could get it. She brings me out this bowl. It, it wasn't even like a, a small bowl. It was like a plate bowl. You know those big plate bowls that are kind of raised up at the edges, filled with this fried rice that had chunks of meat in it. I mean, just chunks of steak. This omelet on top, this huge bowl of soup, and then a couple of side things of, of pickled um, of pickled uh, uh, radish and pickled uh, and, and kimchi. It was so much, six ninety nine. And it was homemade. She was sitting in the, you know, she was making it in the back while I was sitting there. It was amazing. So good. Making it in the back? Yeah. It's these little tiny hole-in-the-wall places that just may have the, the best food. Yeah, I'd keep an ear out for the meowing, but that's just me. I know, I know. <laughs> I'd, I'd be an awful. I'd love um, to try dog sometime. I know that sounds horrible. It's what they eat. It's like chicken. They're chicken, you know? It's meat. It's meat. That's all it is. <laughs> but it, it, was, it, was a, it was amazing. It was so good. And one of the ladies came back and she says, Oh, I'm sorry, that lady that, uh, that took your order, she told me what you wanted and she didn't know, she couldn't make it. So this is not what you order. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't care. I don't care. It's this good. Is... <laughs> oh, my God. So good. So I am so sorry. And I'm like, no, no, it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> Can't talk eating. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, not to derail you, just not get off topic, but um, this will... Let's freak you out a little bit. Um, open up your web browser. Go okay. To Google. Up, right up here. Now, type Zerg Rush. Oh, this is your... Okay. Easter egg invades your search. What? Is the screen doing anything? No. No? All right, well, do it again. All right, go back to Google, type Zerg Rush, don't hit enter. Type Zerg Rush, okay. Zerg Rush. Okay. I'm, um, okay. It's not doing it? Yeah. What the hell? What is it? I'm on Firefox. I, I don't know if that helps. No, that, that shit should freaking work. I'm on a Mac. Maybe that's... Stupid Mac! <laughs> <laughs> this is why I love Mac. Because it doesn't fuck with you. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> Mac's like, what? Something's going to do something? I don't think so. <laughs> Homie, it's don't not, play it's that. Fun. I, it's fun. What 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 is it supposed to do? It's a game. Crush. You, you ever played StarCraft? No, but I know of StarCraft. It's 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 a it's a game. It's a it's a StarCraft thing. 
Zergs that come and attack your search report, your search uh, results. Oh, really? Oh. And, and you have to stop them. And I'm trying to right now. And Google has admitted you can't win the game. But <laughs> that doesn't stop you from trying. <laughs> yep, nothing on Safari either. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The little bastard. Right? Oh, wait. The O's are going around. There you go. What, what's he? Oh, that's uh, that's very cool. Okay, that's cool. Oh wow! And look at that! Oh my gosh! Look at that! There's the O's. I got the O's. No, don't take out the. Oh, oh no! Don't do that. I saved that one. No, no, with the O's. And it's gone. Oh no, there's the ones from the bottom zone, and there's more. That's very fun. Okay, I can do it on Safari, but not on not on Firefox. I'm yeah. not Firefox has been a whole ball of fail for a long time now. <laughs> Firefox used to be my main, my main browser, and it got so bad I just had to say, the heck with it, and I switched over to Chrome. Now see, and I cannot get Chrome to work for me. Why not? I don't know. But, but, let, let's let's try some tech support here, because I I have no idea. It won't even open for me. I have Google Chrome. Op no, it'll open, but it won't connect to anything. So, like I have, I just pushed Google Chrome. It's bouncing in the thing, saying, "Okay, we're starting up here. Here we go. We're getting there. Okay, new tab." And that's as far as I get. I type in Google. Let's let's type in Google and Google search, and it uh, it has done nothing now. Uh, this web page is not available. Huh. I would I I would have to actually see the system to do anything. Yeah. That. It says reload the web page. Uh, if this Use a proxy server, go to application system preferences, network, advanced proxies, and just select any proxies you've selected. No, it's just as soon as I uploaded it, it asked for permission for something. I think it and I said no, and it went okay, and it just never. You may have to do a full, complete uninstall and then reinstall it. Yeah. But that's okay because I've got two other brow. I'm Firefox and Safari and. Remember when we just had the one browser? It was just Netscape. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. And Netscape was actually okay. Well, this was way back in the day, like 94, 95, 96. 94, 95, yeah. I remember when the internet started. <laughs> way back in, actually, <laughs> we're almost that old. <laughs> we are. We are. What was it? Ninety sixty-five. Was it sixty-five when the net, what? or was it sixty-nine? I think it was sixty-nine. I have to check when DARPA did it. I don't really remember. Yeah. Let me see if I can type in sixty-nine. I should probably type nineteen sixty-nine. Yeah, Internet 1969. Oh, um... So we're I'm, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. Just while we're on the subject of feeling old. The next time, and I'll show you in the channel too, the next time any of you complain about uh, you can't get your 3G reception, you can't check your email, your Twitter's on your phone, um, I just want you to remember this. Put it in the channel. I'll give you a link there too. Just remember this, just for a little freaking perspective, okay? This, you you guys don't know. Well, this will make me feel old, won't it? What is that in his hand? From a payphone. Yeah, read the caption at the bottom. 1998, John Brewery from Sharp Electronics checks his email from a payphone using a Sharp Telmail. The Telmail, a portable email appliance, enables users to send the 
You can receive email from most phones worldwide. No cables or special characters you needed. He needs to dial an 800 number. Wow. So yeah, don't don't you be complaining about your. I can't I can't get any signal. I can't get any Twitter. You don't know what it was like <laughs> once upon a day. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I had a I had a friend who was a freaker, and uh, gosh, when was this? This was in. I had maybe just turned 21, so it was in 2000, uh, it was 92, and he had gotten a, a speed dialer from what? Radio Shack, opened it up, put in a new little thing, it was just a little receiver to make it go faster, and uh, yeah, he was a freaker, and, and he'd make free calls. <laughs> oh yeah, I... I... Blue box and uh, yeah. the uh, the Captain Crunch whistle and old stuff, yeah, yeah. Which has got to be one of the most hilarious things in the history of technology. Um, I think the tone is twenty six hundred megahertz, or or I maybe got the 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 measurement off, but it's a certain tone. And way back before they modernized the phone system. Um, the phone system relied on these tones to tell it what to do. So if if you had hung up the phone, a tone would hear. You wouldn't hear this tone, but it would play over the phone system, and it would give the, switch, the switching system commands. Mm -hmm. Well, once upon a time, someone found out that if you make a whistle at the exact right noise... You could trick the phone system into essentially letting you dial anywhere, any in the entire planet for free. And then, to make it even funnier, it turns out a little toy whistle in a box of Captain Crunch I that, did you know, that tone made the exact tone wow. that gave the command to allow you to call anywhere. In the, and that yeah, that, that's where the Captain Crunch thing comes from. That was freak. That was hacking back in the day. He called it freaking. Yeah. Freakers. Yep. Uh, good Lady. times. <laughs> Lady Gaga with adult only content. Rick. What? She can show her tits. I don't know. What? What are you talking What? Oh, uh, Anthony just linked to a story. Oh, this might be, who knows? This might actually be relevant to your interests. Here you go. Um, um, no, no, no. U.S. pop star Lady Gaga has kicked off her Born This Way ball tour with a concert in Seoul that fans under the age of 18 were forbidden to attend. Me. She, she was obscene and could taint young people. Of course. Yeah, taint. <laughs> Her window is closing, I will say that. She she is a very talented woman. Yes. And she's got some she's got some pipes on her. And she writes all her own music, which is another bonus. She's but a talent. Her window is closing. Yeah, she's got to. She's got to stop. Well, no, she's got to change it up. Mm -hmm. She's got to. She, if you're if, she, if you're going to do Bowie, you got to do Bowie. Which means after Ziggy, you got to take another direction. Mm -hmm. It's thin white Duke time. It's it's thin white Duke time. She's she's got to. We need we need to change up. You know. Yeah. Well, and it, it that's why Madonna is, was so vastly popular. She was able to change it, just like you said. She changed with the times. Oh, techno's the new thing? Okay, I'll do techno. Oh, wait, this is the new thing? Okay, I'll do this. Well, okay, I will say, except in Bowie's case, um, he he made the new thing. That is true. Which is that is true. Yeah, I mean, when, when he did Thin White Duke, that was, that was the 80s. 
and people rec- remember then, it from that. And then Tin Machine. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, I love Tin Machine. Yeah. Tin Machine was great. Oh, Bowie is God. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> we had a, I went to a quiz, the one of the few nights that uh, I wasn't, actually running the quiz and um they had a, a bowie round and <laughs> the guys i went with just slid the answer sheet to me <laughs> here you go <laughs> just just fill it out yourself <laughs> I, was like, I don't mind if i do <laughs> uh, did it include his uh, first ever uh, charting single no actually they uh I can't remember all the questions. <laughs> oh, I inflicted that on my audience one night. They hated me. Oh, really? Yes. I don't know a whole lot of trivia about him. What What? what was the... Uh, the... You don't know about mm-hmm. the laughing gnome? Oh, okay. I didn't know it was his first charting single. That was his first ever charting signal, single. Wow. And this is the hilarious part. This is why you never, ever open things up to the audience. <laughs> um, I forget which magazine it was. Um, I think it was Enemy in, uh, in, in Britain. Uh, Bowie was going on tour one time. And he opened it up to voting as to which songs he would play on the tour Mm -hmm. in Enemy. Guess which song got the most votes? Was it that one? The Laughing Gnome. Yes. He was pissed. (laughs) (laughs) Well, when you ask somebody to do it. I'm not doing the laughing fuck the laughing gnome. I'm not doing the fuck the laughing gnome. What the fuck? I'm fucking doing that. <laughs> That's the best Bowie. I can't do Bowie. No one, no, no one is Bowie but Bowie. No one is Bowie but Bowie. <laughs> Although, have you seen him in uh, in extras? No, I haven't. I, I heard him. He was on there. It was the second season, and uh, oh, it was brilliant. Because Ricky Gervais is just... I'm going to spoil a little bit of it for you. A little bit. It, it, not much. And uh, and he's just... And for those of you who don't know, Extras is a brilliant uh, Ricky Gervais show. Yes. Where he's an extra at the BBC. And he's trying to make his own show. You know, everybody wants to be a producer, you know, type of thing. And, um, and it went through two seasons. And they have real stars... So when they got Patrick Stewart, they got Patrick Stewart to play Patrick Stewart, but kind well, they of got a Orlando Bloom. They oh got, yeah, did they get Depp? Did they get Johnny Depp? But I don't know about Johnny Depp. I don't think the second season. I know did. they had they had Orlando Bloom. Yeah. yeah, and they play kind of this freakish version of themselves, you know. So Patrick Stewart is talking about Patrick Stewart. You know, you know when I was in the X Men, I played Professor, you know, Xavier. You know, and, and, and I did this, you know. And, and, and he was just this freako version of himself. Wonderful. <laughs> and, and I have this idea. That's another one for you. you got to watch it. First season is on Netflix, at least. Um, don't know if the second season is. So the David Bowie one is, is Ricky Gervais just is in this bar, and he's just, oh, my gosh. And he starts talking to David Bowie. You know, because David Bowie's there. And, and he starts telling him his, his problems. And so David... Just starts playing the piano. Really? Yeah, this is very interesting. And then he starts singing, Sad little man. <laughs> what? No, no, tell me more about you. you tell me more about you. And he starts singing. And he's like, that, that, that song's not about me. No, no, it's not about you. No, it's not about you. I, I, just, I just sing whatever comes to my head. He's like, all right, well, you know, and, and they don't listen to me. Sad little man, nobody listens to you. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> It's it's not about you. I'm just I'm just saying. Oh my god, it's so fun. It's such a good show. Have you seen the Warwick Davis show? No, I haven't. Yeah, he's it, it's kind of a 
Warwick Davis got his own Gervais produced show. Really? And it's about Warwick Davis playing himself, running an, uh, a talent agency. And oh my God, is it, it's, it's, it's so, <laughs> it's wrong and it's wonderful. <laughs> oh, Anthony Russell doesn't even like. Now see, and I couldn't do, um, I, I couldn't do what, what, the, the, the first show that he, I, I can, I love extras, but you they know, the, the office, office I, I can't do the office. It's too uncomfortable for me. I'm yeah, not, the British version of The Office is a little, yeah. It's really dark. <laughs> and I, I can't do that, you know. I can do yeah, the, black the books. The U.S. version of the, audio, of the Office, it's all it's gotten all heartwarming and, you know, we're family and it. British version of The Office is not like that. It's not like that. At all. It's harsh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and see, and I, I'm not really big on Ricky Gervais shows either, but I like extras because, you know, it, for for some reason, I, for me, it just works. Um, but Ricky Gervais is very much like Will Ferrell, and and uh, and Jim Carrey, they never play a part. They only play Will Ferrell or Jim, or Jim Carrey or, or yeah, Ricky Gervais. Yeah. They, they never, they can't act. They can only be. Well, they're not actors. They're comedians. Yeah. They can only be. So it's, it, but there's some comedians who do, you know, uh, um, Forrest Gump. Tom Hanks? Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Well, that's because he's an actor, not a comedian. But he was a comedian. You did stand up. I'm a com- at best. I at best I could call myself a comedian. I'm not an actor. I'm a comedian. At, at best, if you could call me anything, I'm a comedian. Yeah. Now, see, I no, I ain't nothing resembling a freaking actor. <laughs> now, me, I like I, I I figure that I'm I'm an actor, and uh, you know, but yeah, I mean. Tom Hanks you, you know, was on Happy Days at one time. Yeah, but he also did, did you know, stand-up comedy. Bosom Buddies. Do you remember Bosom Buddies? Yes, I do. <laughs> my, in fact, one of my favorite ones was where he went to his buddy's art show. And, uh, and they were looking, and there was this huge white canvas with this huge red dot in the middle. And it, these Ponzi intellectuals were talking about it. Oh yes, it's it shows the anger, arrest, surrounded by the silence, you know, and this hatred. And Hanks just looks at the thing and he looks at them. It's the Japan Japanese flag. <laughs> My favorite version of that was actually in. Uh, have you ever seen L.A. Story by uh, Steve Martin? Oh yes. God, yes. he's standing there and he's looking at it and he's talking, just pontificating about this painting that they're all looking at in this museum and, and just, you know, and you can see the people, you know, looking at her, you know, through the window. They they seem all disturbed about it, you know, how dare they, you know, they don't know what's going through it. And it's just this big painting of red. It's just this red. It's just red. And there's nothing in it. And so he's gone on for about uh, two minutes about this painting, and it's just red. <laughs> Brilliant. You I love what? that movie. <laughs> you know what's, what's hilarious? I, I think th- th- it's not a joke, but it kind of is. Steve Martin just won a Grammy for a banjo album. Yeah, I can believe it. That is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Because you have you heard it? Wonder, is he trolling us? <laughs> no. For me, I, I know a little bit about the history of Steve Martin. Yeah. For me, he's comedy's Madonna. He's comedy's uh, David Bowie. Yeah. No, he's Madonna. He's gone with it. He hasn't changed it. He hasn't made it. He's gone with it. 
he changes his comedy to be whatever anybody else does. He's a smart, smart man. And he's one of those people who just, as the world changed, he changed his comedy to go with it. And I guess he's just kind of decided, you know what? Now I can do my music. And he's always been a banjo player. And he put together a band. They actually played in the Springs. I, I The tickets were way too expensive for us to go get. So that's why I'm actually kind of amazed. I was like, oh, really? He won a Grammy for that. You know, it was... Uh, Rocky Balboa said, what about Chevy Chase? He's an asshole. No. Chevy Chase is an asshole. Chevy Chase doesn't change his... Chevy Chase hasn't... No. His comedy has never worked. He's an asshole. Yeah. Steve Martin... Did you ever see the roast of Chevy Chase? No. Oh, God, it was brutal. Did Chevy Chase even go? <laughs> he was... He he, he was. He shouldn't have. Oh, God, they were... He was savaged. Wow. It was... I was sitting... You did... It, you're sitting there going, this is supposed to be funny because this, this, they're beating him up with words. Wow. That bad, huh? He is loathed. I was, the whole thing with community lately is, is kind of brought that back to the, to a head. But oh yeah. Where he just left. We've yeah. still got more. No, I'm out of here. Bye. <laughs> but we've got a film. <laughs> You've got parts still. No, bye. <laughs> wow. He's not quite as hated as Andy Dick. Well, Andy that... Dick dig dug his own grave. So did Chevy <laughs> Chase. Yeah. No, yeah, Steve oh Martin. God, uh, Hope, Hope showed me um, uh, Castle in the Sky the other night. And she goes, hey, you see that guy on the right in the tuxedo? I'm like, yeah. And she goes, Andy Dick. <laughs> oh shit it is oh my god <laughs> no way oh, oh crap it is <laughs> holy god yep yeah Andrew Dice Clay he he was he was in the 80s and then he left <laughs> then the yeah. 80s left and he was like what this doesn't work in the 90s well fuck you all I'm still doing this hey all right. Did you see? See the you in the future, Andrew Dice. What? <laughs> Did you see the Adventures of Ford Fairlane? No. I actually saw that movie. <laughs> oh God, I wish I hadn't. I actually saw that. Oh God. <laughs> wow. Oh, that. Oh, how? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually amazed that Larry the Cable Guy is actually still doing as well as he's doing. Uh, if it yes. weren't for the white, uh, for the blue collar tour, I don't think he'd still be around. But he's, but this is a man who can market himself, and I think Larry's, I think Larry knows how to do it, because out of everybody on the on on the blue collar tour, who do you see more of? You see Larry the Cable Guy. I think he knows how to hope, promote himself. I hope he's making some good investments right now, is all I can say. <laughs> Get some long-term stocks, some mutual yeah. bonds. Yeah. Yeah, plan for the future, man. Plan <laughs> for the future. Just saying. But see, and, and that's why, uh, that's why, you know, I think that Steve Martin, you know, because he does this, when, because he did his Wild and Crazy Guy, and then you didn't see him for a while. And then the, the next time that I saw him was on some comedy show. And maybe you can help me with this one yourself. And I was like, wow, Steve Martin. You know, and it was just turning into the 90s. It was just, I think it was just before, I think I was still in high school. I think it was the latter 80s. And he came out on this award show. And he came out in a suit he walked out very calmly in the suit, and it was, you know, Jack and his uh, puppet show. And you were like, okay, whatever, this is going to be fun. And this is on national TV. And Steve Martin comes out in the tux, and he, he bows. And then 
He unzips his pants. And a balloon. I never saw this. <laughs> Inflates. <laughs> it ties itself. And then falls out. And then stuff just starts up. And he's very calm. And people are cracking up. And you're just like, what the fuck? And it was hilarious. And then you realized, left arm hasn't been playing, hasn't been doing anything for a while. And you're like, oh, that's how he does. And it was just funny. And then he started just building this different type of comedy. And he's a smart man. That's all. He's one of my... Uh, He's one of the people that I admire the most because L.A. Story, like I said, it, one of my top five favorite movies. Yeah. I love that movie uh, because it's smart. Roxanne, it's Roxanne like, is oh. not the best movie. No, but it's but good. But the bar scene, the oh. bar scene is immortal. Yeah. He's he's good. He 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 knows how to write. Now, to Shop it, Girl could have been better. Shop Girl was a little dark. A lot dark. It wasn't very good. I, I didn't like it. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Planes, trains, and automobiles. Oh, God. I love... I <laughs> want a cuss. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do the full routine on your stream. It's, it's a little hefty right there. Yeah. Bill Hicks. Bill Hicks was uh, a good... His comedy could make me... But Bill Hicks was very 80s. Very 80s comedy. 80s comedy was... We'll be funny, and then we'll tell you a message for 20 minutes and make you feel very uncomfortable. One Bill, of the best Bill Hicks jokes ever. Um, uh, he was asked why he quit smoking, and he said... Because I wanted to see if Dennis Leary would do that too. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> Wasn't there a show? Somebody told me that there was a show with uh oh, but uh with uh, what's his name? Hold on, I'll remember his name in just. A second. Dane Cook. Dane Cook. There? With Dane Cook. Oh, God. Where he played himself, and somebody said a joke, and Dane Cook, like, went, oh, my God, and pulled out a notepad and started jotting down the joke. <laughs> so he was making fun that people keep on saying that he steals jokes. And it was something like that. I can't remember what it was. Ah. Uh, yeah, there I. Is, there, there is a wonderful biopic about um, Bill Hicks. It came out not too long ago, like a year or so ago, and I don't remember the name of it. But if if you if you look for Bill Hicks, you can find. And I think you can watch the whole thing online too. I think it's like on a website. You can watch the whole. It's a brilliant biopic. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, I I was just so happy. American the Bill Hicks story. That's the one. Yes. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> featherweight yeah I'm, I'm canadian i grew up on sea. hey featherweight i didn't notice you were here man oh yeah great to have you here man <laughs> let me get you some mod powers there no I, but yeah i love yes gosh john can't here's something you guys will love and I don't think I've ever shown anybody this, but uh, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. But yes, SCP, okay. love it. Um, Ron well, that we says, I don't think but. I've ever shown anybody. He's going to bring back like a body part. Maybe. I am. Bob and Doug McKenzie. The figurine. Uh. I don't have the Second other one. City television. <laughs> I don't have the other one, but yeah, this is because they both fit together to make the stage set. Oh, you ozer. 
but I I don't have the other one, but yes. How's it going, eh? It's a jelly. <laughs> he even says that it's a jelly. <laughs> Bonus points if you sat through Strange Brew. Uh, I own Strange Brew. There you go. <laughs> when I went, <laughs> it was so nice. When I went to Con G up in uh, Guelph in February, uh, I think... If I'm not mistaken, they made me honorary Canadian. So it was like, it made me feel really good. It made me feel really good. But uh, yeah, I, I loved Canada. And obviously this has been going since the 1980s <laughs> when I first saw. I saw Strange Brew. My, my big brother took me to see Strange Brew in the theater. Um, their Christmas <laughs> episode. Lean went off. <laughs> uh, Leonhardt, it's not the uh, Christmas episode. They actually came out with an album, yes, which I have. <laughs> I have, I have that album, and it's a. Do, uh, do we have to stop and explain to the kids what an album is? <laughs> it's a big piece of vinyl. Ooh, you haven't seen my vinyl collection. I have a crappy vinyl collection, but it's still vinyl. <laughs> I still have the first album that I ever bought with my own money. Now let me see if I can find it. Oh, dude. You here's an album that you will love. Bet Midler. Uh. This is her doing it at uh I think this was where is this? Has all the information on the back. I think she did this at a uh, at one of the um, bath houses. But yeah, this is a this is a bet Miller. That's not the one that I bought with my own money. <laughs> Abba chess. Oh, oh my God. Chess. Oh, I've got, I have the same uh, the the uh, West End um, concept album. Actually, it's this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have that exact same album. Yep. Love that musical. Um, Lily Tomlin. Oh my gosh, Lily Tomlin. This is a uh, 1971. This is a recording. God, that's that's a great album. Tell me you have matching tie and handkerchief. No, I do not. But I do have the Smothers Brothers at the Blue Onion, or at the Purple Onion. <laughs> oh. Little piece of vinyl history while we're talking about vinyl records. I forget which uh, Monty Python album it is. Oh. Someone in the channel will know. Monty Python trolled everybody. Oh, yeah. There was a technique when making a vinyl album that you could, if you did it just right, make a second set of grooves on the same side. Mm -hmm. So if you put the needle down in one place and weren't expecting it, <laughs> you would suddenly hear an album you had never heard before. Mm -hmm. And they didn't list this anywhere on the album in the liner notes. And suddenly you just flip over to side B and you put the, uh, that was matching tie and handkerchief. Okay. And okay. you put the needle down, and suddenly you're hearing something completely different, and you think you've lo you're losing your mind. Wait a minute, this wasn't on there the last time I heard it. <laughs> yep. Oh my god. Okay, I'm I'm just I'm just pulling out albums now. Um, <laughs> this was the first album that I ever bought with my own money. Bookends by Simon and Garfunkel. Um, and it's still... I still play this every once in a while. <laughs> it well, just, yeah, it, it's Simon and Garfunkel. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's, it's good stuff. But, I mean, Meet the Monkeys <laughs> with David Jones, bless his heart, you know. <laughs> uh... Here's one, Uncle Remus, the Disney album. <laughs> wow. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, here's one you'll appreciate. Chuck Mangione feels so good. <laughs> I love Chuck Mangione. Come on. Yep. Here's one to make uh, uh, Katie Marie squee. David Bowie. <laughs> Golden years. <laughs> good, good stuff. Uh, Xanadu. Because I was a big Xanadu fan because uh, I'm sorry, she's hot. <laughs> Come on, she's hot. She's so freaking hot. Ah. Uh, yeah, I just, I just loved her. Olivia Newton-John was just, she was just hot. <laughs> this was one you that... You better have at least one Queen album on that shelf, mister. I think I do. We will. We've got another 20 minutes to find it. This one's actually not mine. This was my aunt's, but uh, Elvis. Aloha from Hawaii. It's a double album. Which was a very good Elvis album, actually. Via uh, satellite. Wow. Then <laughs> um, we've got... Uh, oh! Daryl Hall and John Oates. Because I'm a Hall and Oates fan. Got uh, Out of Touch, the single. Yeah, this was a single. Yeah, this this was for Rose. These were for Rose. Rock and Soul Part One. Oh my God, I love to hear hollow notes. Ah, and then when I got into uh, the '90s, we had the Dead Milkmen. Eat your paisley. Yes. <laughs> Cause it's the thing that only eats hippies. <laughs> got uh, oh, and you'll appreciate this. My bloody Valentine. This is my favorite album by them, Loveless. My uh, my good friend gave this to me for my uh, birthday about f five years ago. God, this is such a good album. Uh, my Bloody Valentine. Yeah, Wyachi knows that one. <clears throat> God, I love... Yeah, that's such a great album. If you're looking for some... Trying to find some new good music, try that one out, guys. Let's see if you... See what you think. Fleetwood Mac Rumors. This one's also from my aunt, but nonetheless, amazing album. Yeah, that, that's one. If, if you're if you're white from the suburbs, uh, you, you get that one with your birth certificate. I think. <laughs> yeah. Here's your birth certificate. Here's your Fleetwood Mac. Do you want a tusk to go with that one too? No. Okay. <laughs> John Denver's Greatest Hits. Because <laughs> Greatest Hits albums are for little girls and pussies. <laughs> <laughs> we actually found this one at a... Uh, at a... Uh, uh, at a place. <laughs> this one isn't from my thing, but it's Neil Young with Crazy Horse. It's got Cinnamon Girl on there. It's it's a that's a good album. Here's one that you'll like though, Nash. Um, this one I did get secondhand, but nonetheless, it's the band Live the Hollywood Bowl, double album, and it's just yeah, it's win. It's just win. Yeah. Frank Sinatra. This one was my grandfather's. I don't know why I still have this one. All in the Family, the album. <laughs> I honestly don't know why I have this. Oh, God. The next time we all get together, <laughs> somehow you've got to pull that bastard out. <laughs> We've I've... got to hear the glory that is this thing. <laughs> It's, yeah. Oh, here's a good one. Duke Ellington's Greatest Hits. Once again, from a, uh, my grandfather got a lot of albums from an auction, so I can't say that this was, but when he passed, I had to get this one. It's Duke Ellington. Come on. Yeah. 
great stuff. Um, this one I did buy myself, uh, Mamas and the Papas, because, you know, they were good. Uh, this one my grandfather got from an auction, but it's Joe Cocker, so you can't, you know. Oh, Joe Cocker. Yeah, this one doesn't have uh, a little help from my friends, but it does have other stuff. Bobby Darren. Somebody gave me that because I always sing uh, uh, Mac the Knife when we go to uh, when we go to uh, karaoke. I'm not. No, I'm going to make Katie Marie pop. Um, if you hear an explosion, it's Katie Marie's head. It's just going to pop. Okay. I have the John Fitzgerald Kennedy Memorial Album. It's actual speeches, including the inaugural address, civil rights, Cuban rockets, Nixon, Kennedy debate, Alliance for Progress, New Frontier, and Berlin Wall speeches. Okay, kids, this is what we used to do before YouTube. Mm-hmm. Totally. Just, just so you... Yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, that's... Quite the, and then following up the JFK Memorial album, "Pump Up the Volume" by Mars. <laughs> yeah, I, I had an eclectic taste in, in music. Uh, a bunch of Disney stuff. Oh my God! I remember asking my mom for this. And then I did so well in school that I was able to get an album. And I got the Hardy Boys. It had two original adventures. The Disco Conspiracy and the Mystery of the Missing Iceman. What? <laughs> Those aren't the Hardy Boys. These are the Hardy Boys. Those are not the Hardy Boys. <laughs> I call bull. That is no. <laughs> no, this was our in the in the nineteen seventies. This was you lie, <laughs> sir. You lie. <laughs> oh my gosh, I gotta listen to that one again. That was. Is it not the hard? <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, this was one of my grandfather's albums. It's still Jackie Gleason. Ah. Wow. Jackie Gleason. You gotta have a Richard Pryor on that shelf somewhere. I don't. I actually can oh, honestly that. say, every time I went to get him, it was always too expensive or something. Um, yeah. Ooh. Justin Wilson. What about Bill, Co Bill Cosby? I had his cassette tapes. I never got an album. I never We're got an actual like vinyl. Justin Wilson, I guarantee. We started watching his uh, cooking show, and then my grandfather really got into Justin Wilson, and he started buying albums. So this is one from my... But can I play them? I can play them. Yeah. You'll see in all of my videos, to my left side, there's a little record player. And it actually hooks up to your computer so you can actually rip vinyl. So what I should do is I should play the All in the Family, rip it, and then send it, you the MP3s there. <laughs> but yeah, you can, uh, you can do that. And uh, that's, like, super easy. Ooh, I've got Yes. I didn't know I had Yes. This must have been one of my grandfather's albums. Gosh, yeah, this is 69, so yeah, this is early, yes. Ooh. This is self-titled? I think this is self-titled, yeah. Yeah, wow. I did not know I had the... I did know I had these. I have four ELO albums. Well, yeah. <laughs> balance. ELO, ELO is awesome. <laughs> I have balance of power. I have uh, on the third day. 
I have Discovery, awesome album. And I have Out of the Blue, awesome album. Because this has Mr. Blue Sky. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And my mom gave me these... Uh, as I was growing up, I had these... Uh, this mom in Boulder, <laughs> very hippie, uh, wanted me to learn about classical music. And so she bought me these great classical uh, albums that told the life story on one side of the composer, and then you just hear music on the other side. And this was really great. And I had, uh, yeah, I had uh, Corelli and Vivaldi, and then I also had Mozart. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, Steve Martin. <laughs> of course. Just, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what I had when I was wee, and you remember these. Those little 45s, booking a record. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a whole box full of those. This was before, okay, you kids don't know. <laughs> before there was such a thing as DVDs or even VHS. If you wanted the movie again, your only option was to wait and pray for HBO. Yep. Or get the book and the record. Yep. And I'm going to make you happy here. I've got Star Trek. Or Star Wars, rather. Ooh, the John Williams? Um, the book and a record. Empire Strikes oh, Back. Oh, yes, I had I had Star Wars. I had Empire Strikes Back. I had Return of the Jedi. Yep. I had this weird little one-off about these... I'm trying to remember. It, was, it wasn't the full cast. It was like Leia and Chewbacca. And they were these energy creatures that were mm -hmm. eating on the Millennium Falcon. And no one knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> I know. Yeah, this was actually even narrated. Um, because it, it told you the story, and then you could go through, and then it played clips from the movie. And that's uh, and then it, it gives you images from the movie, yeah. so you can follow it along. Yeah, it, this, yes, I completely know what you're talking about. <laughs> I remember Hardee's when Gremlins came out. You could go to Hardee's each week and get one one part of Gremlins on a book and a record. Really? I had them all, yes. Wow. They're like a six part collection of, of <laughs> Gremlins broken up into books book and a uh, book and a record for kids. They had this one that came out in the in, uh, seventy four, yeah. This is but uh, Fairy Tales read by Danny Kay. Danny K. That's one you get yeah. so high and listen to. <laughs> you want a doobie smoking album, that is the one, <laughs> sir. Hans Christian Andersen, because that's one of his best movies. Love that. Uh, oh my gosh. When I was starting, when I was a little kid, I wanted to be a ventriloquist. You're a little kid, you know. You're my grandmother got me this. It's Edgar Bergen on how to be a ventriloquist. Uh, ventriloquist dummies are just freaking creep. <laughs> yeah, I uh, look at that. I mean, uh, Edgar Bergen with Mortimer Snurd and Charlie McCarthy. Charlie McCarthy was creepy. Uh, dead, lifeless eyes, yeah. like a doll's eyes. Oh my! This was another one of my grandfather's ones, but this is the best of Washington humor. <laughs> Humorous excerpts from actual speeches by John F. Kennedy, Barry Goldwater, <laughs> just... Do you realize half the channel has no idea what you're laughing at? No, but you are laughing. You want to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I understand Goldwater. Barry Goldwater doing humor? Oh, come on. Humorous speech by Barry Goldwater. Please. 
Do you have any Tom Lear? No, that was that was that was it for these albums. I can't. Uh, I thought I had more. I see no queen. I see no queen either. I think I may just have the uh, the cassette tape. Shame. Shame. <sighs> well, and there's no way that I'm uh, that I'd ever be able to afford uh, an album from Queen now. Dumbo. I've got Dumbo. Does that <laughs> is that? <laughs> No, I do have Kiss. I think it's in. I think it's at home, actually. Or at home, uh, in uh, in storage, someplace. You know, that might be where my queen is. Who is this? Got uh, Disney. I've got a lot of Disney. Oh my god, I've got a lot of Disney. Sleeping Beauty. The hell is that? A lot of this might be my grandfather's stuff. So Grand Old Opry. Oh my god, Night at the Grand Old Opry. Got uh, Earl Scruggs, Carter Family, George Morgan, uh, Billy Walker, Carter Family. Yeah, odd stuff to own. I think that's my grandfather's. <laughs> ah, Frank Sinatra. This is another one of my grandfather's albums. The movie songs. That's interesting. Ushling Kara would release an album. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, another one of my grandfather's finds, hey, probably. if Brent Spiner can release an album. That's true, that's true. Carol Burnett. The wow. original... Fade in, fade out, the original Broadway cast. Wow. Yeah, and it's even got her, her mug on this. She's she's pretty. I, I always thought that she was pretty. And funny! Oh my god, the Carol Burnett show was awesome. Yes, it was. I know I've got another one in here. Oh! One of my very good friends on Christmas when our when our friends had a big uh, Christmas thing and we'd draw a name and, and we'd buy a present for that, he got me something very rare a couple of years ago. A Doctor Who photo album. <laughs> it's got the TARDIS, Doctor Who, Sea Devils, Meglos, Nissa's theme, Cassia's wedding music, The Threat of Melker, Exploring the lab, Nissa is hypnotized in the leisure hive. That's got to be the tw that's got to be twentieth anniversary or yeah twentieth anniversary edition. Yeah, it's very eighty three. Um, it'll say on the back here somewhere. I think no, it doesn't say. Oh, and that's just side that. one. So yeah, but yeah, this was a very yeah, and it's got the TARDIS on the other side. V yeah, very special, and then. For another, because he drew me two years in a row, he got me Hanukkah Rocks <laughs> by <laughs> by Gefilte Joe and the Fish. <laughs> uh, very nice. <laughs> and uh, it's got Matza Man, Matza Matza Man. I want to be. How do you? How, guys, how do you listen? If people go, how do you listen to that? Only the inner circle. Yeah, it's not the, the outer star edges don't have. Yeah, the album only goes to here. Yeah, <laughs> and so you listen to everything here. Um, it's got uh, "Walk on the Kosher Side." It's got the Hanukkah rocks and the Napper's Delight. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's that's one of the uh, special albums. <laughs> uh, and oh, I got this actually about four or five years ago. When did I get this? I got this, yeah, two thousand and nine. So I only got this about three or four years ago. The sounds, I love it when bands actually produce an actual album anymore. You know, it's uh, 
and the sounds are good. I, I really like their music. Um, I think they only did the one album. I could be wrong, but it was, was the, it was good. There was an artist recently who who um, for their I, I want to say it was uh, Jack White, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, he did an album release, and by release I mean he printed uh, 200 records. And attach them to balloons and let them go. Really? Yes. And if you found a balloon, you got you got the record. Wow. And they put little GPS trackers on the balloons so they could know where they where they went. How interesting. Oh my gosh. I can't and believe it was an album release. And an album with oh. You will like this one. Janis Joplin. Does this make up for not having Queen? What album is it? Is it Pearl? Pearl, yeah. That, oh my god. Does that make up? <laughs> yeah. Where's the cover? I can't find it. I can't find it. I just saw it was, uh, but yeah. So am I forgiven? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's a piece of fucking history right yeah. there. And then for my good friends, uh, Weird Al and Weird Al in 3D. Uh, First album. God, I we would sing those songs in elementary school. Oh, yeah. All the time. Our teachers hated them. <laughs> I've seen him in concert twice, and he's been I've a joy to watch. Him. Oh, it's great! I've never seen him. I need to. Yeah, I need to. I've... He plays stuff that he doesn't, he can't play on an album, and he he shows it on on the TV because there was one where he interviewed um, uh, Eminem. Oh my God, that was hilarious! Because <laughs> Eminem yeah, interviewed. Yeah, interviewed. <laughs> it's great. Oh my gosh. The Robotech album. This was just Whoa. this was just when the uh the, the cartoon was hitting its peak in the late eighties and stuff, so yeah. The hmm. magic of Japanimation. Yes! When we called it Japanimation. <laughs> yeah, that was good stuff. Oh my gosh. And my mom had bought me this. Original cast, Sesame Street. Book and record. <laughs> book hey, and look, Mr. Hooper's still alive. Mr. Hooper was still alive, and it had the book and the record. And you could look through the book. Rubber Do you remember when Mr. Hooper died? One. I do. I actually In watched episode, that one. Yeah. I actually watched that one. Yeah. The original Gordon. <laughs> yeah, when Mr. Hooper died, that was very sad. And uh but I you know, they did it they did it well because uh they you know, they talked about well, sometimes people die. Suck it up and deal, kids. Yeah. <laughs> Here's one you'll love. Uh Petra. This was me trying to clasp on to any type of Christianity that I was holding on dear to. I was like, no! It can be good! It can! It's like I can touch you! <laughs> but, <laughs> but alas, no. But yeah, Petra. Petra. <laughs> Dr. Doolittle? Wow. Ah! Star Trek The Motion Picture. Oh, man. The album. Check it out. They've seen the other image of the cast in the background there. <laughs> wow. Ah, Minute Work. I remember actually buying this one because uh, I like Minute Work. And it was good. <laughs> and we are nearing the end of the collection here. Ah! Abba's Greatest Hits. 
I did uh, like Abba. Uh, freaking Abba. Hey, the the two guys did chess. <laughs> so it can't I be guess. all bad. 